Hello, in this video we're going to talk about consumer surplus and do a number of different examples. Consumer surplus is the difference between the maximum a consumer is willing to pay for a good and that good's market price. It is a measure of consumer well-being or consumer welfare. The more consumer surplus, the better off consumers will feel. And one other thing we should note here is that I mentioned maximum willingness to pay. That is going to be given by the vertical height of the demand curve. We'll see that later. So let's do a number of examples. Here, uh, a person, Barbara, is willing to pay at most $130 for a pair of boots. If she only pays $80, what's her consumer surplus? So consumer surplus, based on the definition, is just the maximum willingness to pay minus the price. Maximum willingness to pay is $130. We see she only pays $80. The difference is consumer surplus. Barbara was willing to pay $50 more than she actually did for this pair of boots. Example two, Steve received $14 of consumer surplus after buying sunglasses for $50. What was Steve's maximum willingness to pay for the sunglasses? Setting up that formula again, consumer surplus equals maximum willingness to pay minus the price. We'll plug in what we know. Consumer surplus is $14. The price we're told is, told is 50 Solving, we see that the maximum willingness to pay then must be $64. We can double check our answer by taking the maximum willingness to pay of $64, subtracting out the price. You get consumer surplus of $14. The next example, Max received $8 of consumer surplus after buying a movie. His maximum willingness to pay for the movie was $20. What was the price of the movie? Here again, we've got consumer surplus equals maximum willingness to pay minus the price. There are three things. We know two out of these three things. Consumer surplus is $8. Maximum willingness to pay is $20. So we need to solve for the price. And the answer that makes the most sense is $12. 20 minus 12 gives us consumer surplus of $8. Example four, we have a market with four consumers and their respective maximum willingnesses to pay for a concert ticket. If the price of a concert ticket is $20, who will purchase a ticket? So all we have to do is compare the maximum willingness to pay with the price of a, the concert ticket. Since 40 is greater than 20, Andy will go and buy a concert ticket. Uh, for Bobby, 30 is greater than 20, so Bobby will buy a concert ticket. For Kathy, 25 is greater than 20, so here too, Kathy will buy a concert ticket. She values going to the concert more than the price she has to pay for it. And finally, Danny. Danny will choose not to buy a ticket. He's not going to buy a ticket and pay $20 when he only values a ticket at $10. So only three people will choose to purchase a ticket, Andy, Bobby, and Kathy. Okay, they will each purchase a ticket. And then the next part of this question, well, what is the consumer surplus in this market at a price of $20? Well, Andy will get $20 of consumer surplus, 40 minus 20. Bobby will get $10 of consumer surplus, 30 minus 20. Kathy will get $5 of consumer surplus, 25 minus 20. Adding that all up, the total consumer surplus in this market is $35. Andy, Bobby, and Kathy were willing to actually spend $95 on these three tickets, 40 plus 30 plus 25. They only spent $60. How do I know that? Well, three tickets were purchased at a price of $20 each, so they're willing to spend $95 on three tickets. They only spent $60, so this is just another way of backing into consumer surplus. Again, it's $35. Notice that the consumer surplus is not split equally among these three consumers, um, but just adding them all up, it does equal $35. All right, and our final example. Here we have a demand curve, market demand curve, and we want to calculate consumer surplus given a market price. Uh, in this example, the market price is $12, so consumers will buy 40 units. 
What is consumer surplus? The difference between the maximum willingness to pay, which is given by the height of the demand curve, and the market price of $12, all the way up to that last unit consumed. There's some consumer that at most is willing to pay $12 for the product, and that's exactly what she pays. Okay, um, so what is consumer surplus? It's the area of this triangle, and we're going to use the formula to calculate the area of the triangle, which is 1 half base times height, which I report up here. The base of this triangle is just 40 units. Okay, This horizontal distance right here, that's 40, so that's where that's 40 is coming from. And the height of the triangle is given by 20 minus 12, so this is 8 units high. And so doing the math here, 1 half 40 times 8 is $160 a consumer surplus in the market. We could calculate consumer surplus at a different market price. Uh, if the market price was $8, consumers are paying less and they're buying more, so consumer surplus should go up. Uh, to visualize that area of consumer surplus, I'm tracing out the triangle right here with my mouse. So that triangle has a base of 60 and a height of 20 minus 8 or 12. So here's the formula and that'll add up to $360. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video beneficial.